So here we go. We're going to drain the oil out of that Silverado uh, that I had in yesterday with the low oil pressure and the motor was tapping. The customer wants me to change the oil and see what happens first. And um, we're going to go from there. So, <laughs> so the, whoever changed the oil last time was nice enough to leave me a socket attached to the drain plug. Take, the, take a look at that. Oh, there it is. It's actually, I cannot get it off of there. I tried. So I already cracked the free. I did not drain it yet, but I'm really curious how much oil is actually in this thing. <laughs> yep, that's it. That's, oh, look at that. Look at that. That's not good. So what is that? That's the equivalent of a quart, maybe? There's no oil in this motor. None. Well, you can see a silver tinge to it. Now, I did get the motor warmed up a little bit. I didn't want to leave it running forever. But there's literally no oil in this motor. So I don't have high hopes for it, I'll tell you that much. Let me see if the filter will come off easily. So one thing I hate about these things, they put them in such a precarious spot. It's like, oh, you can't really grab it well. All right, let me get a filter wrench and try to take that off. All right, so I got it loose with the uh, strap wrench. Now let me let this leak down a bit. That is just pure mud right there. I mean, that's nasty. That's, I don't know if you guys have ever changed oil on a diesel, how it gets all like sticky and, and just leaves like a black residue on everything. That's exactly what this oil looks like. There, there's, there's no oil in this thing. Let me let that drain a little bit so I'm going to take the filter off. All right. I mean, that's just disgusting. This filter weighs about four pounds, too. That's a small filter. It'll be that heavy, so you know it's stopped up with goo and crap. That That's absolute lack of oil changes right there. And once you start running an engine low... You will start burning oil faster. Um, just as an example, let's say we're just going to use even numbers here. Let's say you burn a quart of oil in a thousand miles, let's just say. So now you have a capacity of five quarts. You burned that one quart, now you're down to four quarts. Now, to go from four quarts to three quarts, it may only take you three weeks. It may only take you 750 miles, let's say, if that's what you're doing. And then to get down to two quarts, it may only take you 500 miles because it burns faster the more you use up because you have less of it in there. It's just it's just how it works. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually grab a filter and I'm going to prime the filter before I put it on there. So let me go ahead and do that. Now what do I mean by prime a filter? It means I'm going to take oil and I'm going to pour oil into the filter and basically fill the filter up. So this way I don't have that void in there to, you know, of no oil to you know have to get pushed through and everything else and push that air out. This way it gets oil pressure faster. I know the damage is probably already done to the motor, but I figured it's not going to hurt. I can do it to this car because the filter goes straight up. If the filter goes sideways or down, you, you can't do it. So let me fill this up real quick. Right, so here's the filter, and what I do is just take oil. You pour it in, and you let it settle because it's got to um, it's got to soak into the medium of the filter. So it's, you know, it's probably going to take a third of a quart, maybe a half a quart, depends. I mean, I've seen some of the bigger Ford 1A filters take an entire quart, and the Cummins can actually take more than a quart. So, like I said, I don't normally do this. I, I actually do if the filter is this type where it goes straight up. Um, I Almost all the time I'll prime them. It's just a habit I've gotten into. You don't have to. It's just something I do. So let me get this filled up, and then we'll get it on the car. So there we go. It's filled up. So that, that's good like that. It's about a third of a quart, like I thought. So now I'm just going to clean off the gasket surface up top. You always want to make sure that you're not double gasketing it. Make sure the gasket didn't get stuck to the motor. And we're going to go clean that off real quick. I'll just wipe it down. You don't have to go crazy with anything. 
just wipe it and that should be good you can see this thing's kind of grody but then again this thing's got a quarter of a million miles on it so now we're gonna put the filter up there now over the years you're supposed to put a film of oil on the gasket and over the years I've done it, I haven't done it, and I find absolutely no difference. I don't find it makes it any easier to get the filter off either. Because I've done it on my own cars, where you know I'm the only one changing the oil, so it's like I think I would know if if it made a difference. And I've never actually found it to make found it to make a difference. I've never found that if I don't do it that they come off easier. I never found that if I do it, they come off easier. I never found that it creates a leak if I don't do it. I never found it creates a leak if I do do it. So, there it is. It's on. It's tight enough. Do not put a strap wrench on this and tighten it. There's no need to. You don't have to go nuts tightening these things up. So, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little magnet and I'm going to stick it in the drain plug hole. Let me grab one. All right. So, now I'm curious. I got my little magnet here. I could feel mud in there. I mean, it didn't pick up any large chunks. I mean, it picked up a little residue. Sorry, it's not focusing. Focus. There we go. It picked up a little residue, and you can see some metal flake in there. So I'm confident the damage is already done. Right, let's clean off the drain plug, and let's get that installed. At least it's got its own handy little installation device. Some cheap Chinese socket. And there again, you don't have to go nuts tightening up a drain plug. You know, you don't have to put a breaker bar on it and, you know, torque it to, you know, 300 foot pounds. You know, put a little wrench on it, a little ratchet on it, and just make it snug, a little more than snug, and you're fine. Just like that, that's all. I didn't go crazy. Now, let's put oil in this now. So there we go. I just added six quarts of oil. I usually, this is conventional oil. This calls for synthetic. It calls for Dexos-based oil uh, this model year. But obviously, I'm not going to waste the money or anything on synthetic oil in this thing because, like I said, I'm pretty sure the motor's going to be done, but you never know. I've, I've been proven wrong before. I'm not a big fan of Fram filters at all. However, I'm using their oil because it's, uh, moderately priced and not for nothing it's not Fram's own stuff they just relabel it so you know it's uh, that's the only reason I'm actually using it I don't I wouldn't use their filters if I can at all avoid it I, mean, I do here and there when I have no choice but I prefer not to so let me just finish this up let me put this away let me get this out of here put the cap back on I know these things hold six quarts. I don't even have to bother checking it because they all hold six quarts. And let me hop inside and start this thing up and see what it does. Oops, actually, the battery's no good. So let me. I got the booster pack I got to hook up. Hang on a second. So there we go. It's hooked up. It's on. in here start it up let's see what the oil pressure is and if you recall from the other day the oil pressure was pretty much just over zero well that in itself is a major improvement I think what I might do is take this thing for a ride up the street and see what it does. At least that'll give me some idea of the condition of the motor. Because the reason it actually came to me was it died out while he was driving. Whether it seized up temporarily, I don't know. I do know that this thing has a problem with the ignition switch. So maybe it shut off and the battery is shot and that's why he couldn't get it restarted. I don't know. But the fact is that, you know, as you saw, this thing had less than a quart of oil in it. 
right, so let me do that. Let me break this thing down. I'm going to take the jumper pack with me. And uh, let me get this outside and we'll go for a quick road test. So amazingly enough, I took this thing down the road. Uh, it's about four miles uh, in total down and back. Uh, I have an eight mile loop I can go on. Uh, but at idle now, it, the engine's hot. It's holding about 25 PSI. When you go up the road, it comes up over 40, I believe. And that's you know how accurate is the gauge too. These things are notorious for having gauges that are not exactly accurate. So. Let me, I'm on my little dead end road now, and let's go down the road and let's see what it does. So here, actually, let me shut this off. So you see, it's just over, it's like 25 at idle, and the motor's hot. Now let's go. Considering the mileage on this thing, the motor and tranny actually feel pretty darn good. Obviously, the damage is already done to the motor. Uh, there's no way I'm going to, you know, you're, there's no way you're going to get around that. You're not going to put like a Lucas oil treatment in it or anything like that and escape the fact that there's damage. That just doesn't happen. Don't forget, oil treatments are a band-aid. They don't really do anything worthwhile. So let's go back up the road. I got to keep the windows down because the AC doesn't work and it gets hot in here. But the motor actually runs very well. I'm kind of surprised. All right. Well, I'm going to call him up and tell him what I got. And the weird thing is, I actually, he's a good customer of mine, but I've actually never seen this vehicle before. So I don't know if he just purchased it not too long ago. I have no idea. I've never seen this truck before. He's got a couple of different trucks. Um, as a matter of fact, if you've ever seen that video that I have with the ticking 5.3, that's this guy's. He owns that truck too. Um, but anyway, all right. I'm going to call him because, like I said, it needs an ignition switch. I know that. It needs a battery. I know that. So I'm going to tell him we've got to do those things. And... I'm going to tell them, you know, hey, you ran low on oil. The damage is already done, you know, but it seems to be okay for now. You know, it, it could last a while, you know, but we know that there's damage in there. So, all right. If you get anything out of my videos, hit the like button. If you could, please subscribe. That's it for right now. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.